Walker also helps them take these fights on their terms a bit better, which is an advantage. It helps them get behind them and find the key rooms like the Arbonite to silence all that. Okay, well, let's uh, jump in game. Looks like our little feed has a... Uh... Perfect time That's to jump good. into the game. All right, game number one of the night. Remember, folks, we've got five. All right, <coughs> let's get into it. Let's do it. It's Brax and Mott. I wonder... Prepare Man, this is interesting. I do really like this draft for newbie Brax. Is there a chance? I mean, you have Bristleback Io for DC. It's a good chance they could just take this game. It is, again, that best of one series, which I think actually helps DC, especially with this draft, a lot here. No, definitely. I mean, Bristleback Io, especially with the Omni Knight, their five man is so strong. Mm -hmm. Like, we've seen Bristleback time and time again just destroy some of these early game team fights and snowball. Like, uh, he's probably one of the best heroes doing Roshan as well. So, right. DC definitely have a good shot as well. Yeah, this is uh, it's gonna be interesting. We'll see how the wards and stuff uh, get placed early on here. Interesting ward placements early on from newbie. They throw one towards mid, one over towards the shrine as well. So just trying to keep tabs on this mid lane for newbie. Uh, meanwhile, DC will rotate, place one over towards the pole camp, and block it as well. Uh, other wards for DC have not been put down yet, and then a sentry to block the pole or excuse me the hard camp top against digital chaos as well. So the radiant actually blocking that camp. Interestingly enough. What else do we got going on? Mugi, just sitting bottom for now. It doesn't look like we're going to see any aggressive play, like going for those early kills after the uh, the rune is taken, which we've seen a lot recently, like that aggressive play to, to find that mid-hero, especially from newbie as well. The battle begins. None of that's going to be happening this game, and I can't imagine that... Uh... All right, it looks like we just have normal lanes from everyone, but I feel like newbie, they have supports that can make these rotations happen. Right. right, I mean, Night Stalker wants to wait till nighttime before he really wants to do anything, but Crystal Maiden, probably jungle, get her early stuff. Oh no, alright, we have a switch up here, Bristleback and Io in the offlane there. Clockwork. Hmm. So, aggressive try lane from DC. Um, not sure, I don't think they're dodging KP, I think they just want to be putting some aggressive play on Mugi and not let him get this free farm. And we'll see how this is going to turn out. I mean... Uh, what do you have here? I mean, these heroes are kind of easy to kill. At least Faith is easy to run down if you're the Bristleback. But we'll see what happens. Maybe one cog will help Bulba secure a kill. This is a weird tri lane. This is yeah, going to be interesting. Is, it's definitely a weird tri lane. It feels like they can't really pressure the Weaver too much, right? Like, yeah. he's just going to kind of farm. DC is just going to kind of farm. <coughs> he's just going to scooch you out. I don't, I don't know, that's like interesting. That. Maybe they wanted the matchup top for Ferev against the, the Batrider, but that doesn't seem correct either. It's I don't a pretty know. good matchup for Ferev, actually. It helps Is a it? lot. He will get zoned a bit early, but once he hits like two or three, he can ignore the sticky with Repel. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's not that great. Repel has a 30 second cooldown now at level one. I lied. <laughs> good game. Yep. He actually avoided the fifth sticky stack, which is nice. Just avoid all of that damage early on. He also has 10 stick charges already. He started with the early stick. KP putting pressure. We'll keep our eyes peeled here, but more importantly, that bottom lane is where the action's gonna happen. But as it stands right now, like you mentioned, they're not gonna be able to really shut down Mugi or Mason from farming. Both heroes are just gonna be fine. Maybe it's that like early rotation, but if you rotate Kaka and Faith out, you're gonna notice, or even vice versa if you're if you're DC. Any hero rotations from the supports is gonna go noticed by the other squad, I would imagine. Yeah, at least uh, DC were able to block up the smart camp with the the small camp with their observer ward. So that helps mm. them a bit in this aggro league. Even if there's not a whole lot of kill potential, they'll eventually like need to leave the support heroes if they want to be able to get experience on their own. Right. And thankfully, Crystal Maid is pretty good at that. He just jungles up, gets to level two, now has the aura. And uh, I mean, Doo has a bottle in this lane now. This is when it gets really hard to actually go on the Bristleback because mm. Io can heal him up. Yeah. And the overcharge will come out as well. When that happens, it gets even harder. But already you can see the rotation coming in from uh, Bulba to the top lane. He's like, I don't, I can't really get anything bottom. We're not going to find kills. Might as well turn this into a 2-1-2. Another thing to keep in mind, Abed as well as SCCC are very difficult difficult to gank in this lane. You have Blade Fury on one side. You have Lucy Arvin face up on the other. So good luck ganking these heroes. There's no real quick potential on either of these heroes here. Ooh. Yubu in some trouble. Fairy Fire is up, still alive. Couple more auto attacks from Mugi. Meanwhile, Mason gets the kill on Faith in the back line. So it's going to be a one for one. More Quill Spray Spam, but Mugi is able to scooch you out and get away in time. So it is first blood going the way of DC. Newbie get the return kill, but it's on Dubu. 
Oh, Kaka trying to get out. Looks like he will be able to make it away. Good attempt from Dubu and Mason, but that's all you need to do in this lane is just TP out. Hope you have enough time and health to do so. All right, oh, Blade Fury mid. Abed about to fall here. The Waning Rift will not save his life. He'll take a couple of tower hits, and he has the Healing Ward as well. And he'll actually drop aggro just in time on top of it all. And so DC, they will lose a second hero, and that's Abed in the mid lane. All right, solo kill from Juggernaut on the puck in the mid lane. That's definitely very, very unexpected. Yeah, it was not. It's a good thing I was looking at the health pools. No jaunt in. Yeah, he needs to deal with that healing ward. He might have been able to get the kill if he had he gotten the healing ward, but easier said than done. Um, by the way, as expected, they're already stacking up the Ancients here for Dubu and a couple of the camps as well. So Dubu doing a pretty good job despite dying, making sure this Bristleback has some way to farm later on in the game. A Bristleback, man, he is in a very comfortable position as well. He can mm -hmm. pretty much solo this lane. There's no kill potential on him. Now this is when the lane uh, gets really, really scary. Bristleback hits have level three or four-ish. Yeah. It is nighttime. Kaka only level two though. About to hit level three. Like a couple more creeps coming in. We'll see if he rotates out. Maybe head somewhere else. Uh, again, very tough to gank Abed. And also the Bristleback as well. So really you're looking for support, I think, for DC. That's really the only gankable hero as Kaka early on. My god, Moogie. Be careful, buddy. Yeah, these clothes, man, are not easy for them to deal with. And look, he has to go for a bottle as well, along with a wander, Leon. Eesh. These are not the most optimal items you want. So, he's starting to slow down now. We'll see how it goes for him, but... I mean, Mason when to get level 3 clothes, especially, which he has now. Good luck, Moogie. Like, he's just gonna walk up to the tower, and he's like, if you walk up to get the CS, I'm gonna close spray you. Good luck. Enjoy. And meanwhile, Dubu has, like, Quad stacks on the Ancients and this other camp up here, so Crystalback is gonna get his farming soda out of control here pretty soon. Here comes and Kaka. The... Maybe they can gank him with the Night Stalker. That casual void does like no damage even on level two. It's not the most damaging spell to begin with, but the CM is like, I'm just gonna frostbite. Enjoy. You guys, good luck with that lane. Yeah, they want nothing to do with this lane at all, man. It's, it's not cool. fun. You know, DC actually winning out on two out of the three lanes. I know uh, Abed did die in the mid lane, but he's still farming pretty well, so. Mm -hmm. It's hard to, like, I can't see the Juggernaut being able to snowball that many things. Well, Dream here. Coil. He'll break it, but here come the Kog as well. Illusory he's going to fly over with Man. the Hunter in the night, and that might be enough to get him away. The no Frostbite way. will fly as well. Abed looking to back up Omni Slash. Actually kills Dubu because of the phase shift. And now he's done, it looks like. He doesn't have it. Olusio Jaunt might get him away. Can't get up to the high ground. And DC will lose two. It looks like they did not keep in mind the Hunter in the Night available for Kaka there. And so they lose out on the kill as well. I mean, this is just something that people aren't used to yet, you know? But Newbie, they definitely know how strong this ability is. To escape death. Fly over these kills. And now they spot out all these stacks. Yeah, he's... That's, uh, that's pretty good for Kaka. He's done that numerous times, I feel like. Yeah. He's actually definitely. been able to get out of those situations. Not just once, but a couple times. He's played this hero a lot recently, too, which is important, but... Sure. You know, with these new uh, ancient changes, Batrider can actually farm ancient stacks. Yeah. It takes him a long time, but it's like it is possible. It's like 10 stacks of Sticky, probably, at this yeah. point, I would say. Maybe even more. And it still won't kill all of them. Yeah. The big ones, especially. But it is an option if we do want to try to steal it. But of course, Mason, they're already doing it. Faith is getting chased by Bulba. And we'll get off the battery assault with the Cogs, and that should be a dead Faith. He has already used all of his mana coming in as Kaka, as well as Mookie. They're turning this around. Dubu's going to fall. Mason might be next. Tough to turn on. Of course, Bulba pretty tanky as well. And uh, yes, they will lose the aisle, but again, they get Faith. And they are going to maybe try to contest this. The Swarm is up. Mookie will walk in. They want to finish off these big... Ancient creeps here. They'll get one, and they might be able to get more. TPing in he's is going to be some of the DP DC heroes. Mason walking up. Kaka in some trouble now. One more close spray, but he's going to hunt from the night to the low ground yet again and survive once more. And Bulba thought about going, but of course, no way to close the gap. Not without those shot until level 6. And that'll be that. That's such a cool ability, man. I love Hunter that change. Tonight. Yeah, it's great. Like, sometimes all cool. you need is that one small change to kind of bump this hero up into... Like that very strong category. Mm -hmm. so that's what it feels like. I mean, and especially if you get that early Aghanim Scepter, it almost feels like the hero is broken when you get the Ags, right? I mean, yeah. it's essentially a map hack. Which is Frostbite, Waning Rift, Jaunt through SEC, couldn't find an Omni Slash as the Waning Rift came out. 
I'm not sure if he would have wanted to go for it because the jaunt was going to come through. But they're putting some adequate pressure. So that was the first nighttime now done. And they did pretty well. They got, I don't know, a couple kills out of it. A lot of those kills that they got came from the next time. So. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we saw that big one where we got the Hunter and Night off over the cogs and we got spoiled and they were able to turn the team fight there. But, uh, you know, DC still have a small advantage in the lanes you have. Forev on his Omni Knight, level 7 now, free farming the lane. Mason also free farming just anywhere he wants. He's got an early Vanguard picked up. Very, very tanky. Yeah, he's feeling pretty good right now. Let's see if he can't put any pressure on Moogie's lane. Uh, no towers have been taken yet. SCC also doing pretty well on farm. Abed looking to build up into Vale first and foremost. SCC gonna go Mantis style, I would imagine. What other big items are we gonna see first uh, for these heroes? Brev trying to build into, I believe, a pipe. Hmm. All right. Midas pipe. Yep. He's gotten pretty good farm. That Midas will accelerate him pretty well. Yep, you know, someone we haven't talked about at all this game is KP on his barrier. He's very close to Blink Dagger. 1500 gold at 9 minutes with his yeah. 1 1. Oh, oh, man, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Already up to 1600, almost 1700 gold with that star in the top lane. Net worth wise, he's just a little bit below the puck. Brev is doing very well as well, top lane. Purification, farm. He already has a cloak. Again, building into that Midas. Um, but what about the levels from the supports? As expected, because of the aggressive tri lane. DC don't have the highest levels on the IO or the clockwork. And because of the kills for the Night Stalker, Nubia are doing pretty well in their levels, at the very least. Yeah, it's a bit worrying to have a level 4 clock at 10 minutes from the game. Mm -hmm. Definitely a hero that we want to see, like, get rolling from the very beginning to get his level 6, but it's not going to happen this game. But, you know, Bulba Clockwork, great player, great clockwork player as well. Yeah, we've seen what he can do in the past, and as soon as he gets that hook shot, should be able to provide a lot of uh, room for his squad. He will get the Tome of Knowledge, and that'll help him get to that level 6, but you're right. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that he couldn't pull down in this bottom lane. He stayed down here for a fair bit. Couldn't do much about it. They'll drop the ward. Moogie getting sort of dove under his tower now, heading into the tree line. And uh, they might actually start pressuring this tier 1 tower and trying to take it here early on here for DC. Do we have to come if their mid tower is getting hit and there's no one there defending the SEC is just hitting it freely. But, I mean, it's pretty hard for them to kill Mui unless they can actually land the Dream Quill. I imagine as soon as they see the puck rotate and he's going to leave. Unless yeah. you actually want to defend this. Well, that's like the, the question. State. They're going to TP Mason out towards the mid lane as they're putting pressure there. And they want to keep this Tier 1 tower alive. So, pretty good stuff for Newbie to apply pressure elsewhere and force out the other heroes from DC. Yep, and now Mui is safe to defend this bottom lane with no real threat since Bush is back had to leave. Goodbye, sir. Is he done though? Omni Slash, Slave Fury. They can maybe turn this. They have Dream Quell. Face, or excuse me, uh, Omni Slash as well as Blade Fury have been used. The Lucero got through Waiting Rift. This could be a pretty big kill. Even if he got into the Shrine in time, it wouldn't have mattered. He didn't have it up. So Mason actually gets the kill, and I think Bulba's probably alright with that trade. <coughs> yeah, definitely. Big kill on SCC's Juggernaut here at top of the net worth. Going down like that. Mm hmm. But uh, now it's night time for newbie. This is the scary part of the game now. Bat has blink as well. Forever is in some trouble top lane. Yeah, we're gonna see him get caught. Freezing field along with the silence to come out. And they kill him in time. That silence is rough from Kaka. Even at level one, during night time, he cannot get out of it. There's the void to come through. More firefly from KP, and just like that, KP makes a huge impact with the first blink of the game. And then Moogie takes out the Wisp as well, just catching on the crumble. Alright. So everything crumbles at night time for DC it appears. Yeah, the first night wasn't much better. Already the, the second night not looking so good. They they had a slight advantage, I believe, in this game earlier on, and that's just kind of dwindled away. SCC getting off to a very fast start, has stopped the network. Moogie is still getting farmed despite having pressure applied to him from Mason. And they're going to start getting these towers. They denied the mid-tier one for DC at least, but now the top tier one. There's a good chance this is just taken by Newbie here. Yep, and DC feels 
feel like they have to finally make something happen here. They're just running down to the bottom lane, not even smoked up or anything like that. They just have to bring the numbers so they can finally secure a tower to open up the map for them. Because right now, they're just losing towers left and right. They need so, something. I would imagine if you're a newbie, you don't want to fight 5-on-5 five five into a bristle bag Omni Knight. Is that where you make your, your money for DC? Just trying to fight around all five of these heroes? Or yeah. are newbie okay to fight? Um, newbie might be okay to fight if they can get the proper initiation on, but they probably, they're okay with this because if DC are grouped up as five, then newbie are fine anymore, right? Like, KP behind doesn't fight here, he's just casual fire flying with people, while newbie push top lane as, you know, they're only playing with two heroes, so DC assume that there are more people there, they just don't know how many, and then newbie can use that to their advantage to play the economy game. Yeah. And it's not like, you know, newbie had bad split push. I think their split push is actually very solid. Weaver, especially later on into the game, if you get something like a Deso, he could take down towers pretty easily. And Jug's not a bad split pusher either with that uh, Blade Fury TP if you can get out in time. So. Yeah, Might be tough for DC to find the favorable trade. And in fact, already you can see the split push occurring. SCCC, top lane, that tier 3 tower, the cliff is already gone. And they're just going to have to back up now. And uh, to kind of help combat this push, but they just don't have a, a lot of heroes to catch. I mean, they have Puck with the Dream Coil, but it's hard for him to show up in any of these lanes against Night Stalker and Batrider. Right. Same with Clockwork, he's on level six right now. Pretty much anything can kill him. And, and the other thing is, they don't even have the relocate yet. He's not even level six. That's true. So it's not great, but we'll see if they can't turn it around. A good team fight. They've got the ability to have it for DC. They have the Omni Knight. They have the Puck with Dream Quill. Good winning risk will do the job. He has Veil as well. Almost says Blink. So Abed farming pretty well. Um, right around tied with Mugi on the Weaver, who now has his Dragon Lance building into the Diffusal Blade, which makes sense against an Omni Knight and uh, the rest of the crew as well. So some good items about to come out here for newbie. Good ones and some big ones for. Oh. Everyone's just farming on newbie, man. And DC, they. They know that they need to force something to happen, even though it's nighttime, or else they're just gonna get in the stage of the game and they do a whole lot. Alright. Uh, Takas is running in and actually might get solo killed here. The Dream Coil, the Waning Rift, he might be able to break it. The Darkness is gonna get popped. They actually canceled the TP. Clockwork thought about coming in. Alive, but Bulba says no. I think maybe they might have spotted the rotation coming in from SCCC. Yeah, I don't know why else they would cancel it. Though. So that sucks. That was almost a solo kill. Couldn't quite get it. And now they're going to back up. And that's, that's their catch tool right there, too. The Dream Club down for 45 more seconds. Yeah. <coughs> so some more time to use here for newbie. Just split push. I, don't know. I mean, this team already has a freaking four staff, so... It's not great, let me tell you, it is not great. Like, they have, the supports are extraordinarily underfarmed compared to newbie because of exactly what you were talking about. They're able to just split push, farm freely, not be worried about too much from DC's side, except for maybe the occasional tower push. They're gonna go for the frostbite. They might go for a lasso here from KP, looking for Dubu. The daytime is ready. Blink Lasso coming out, this is good. They want this kill. That's the Solar Crest. KP taking a lot of damage here. They do end up burning down Dubu, but can KP get caught? Looks like no. Mace is taking too much damage. Looking for a TP. Omni Slash and won't be enough. They needed the mana from Faith for the Frostbite, and he didn't quite have it. Oh, God. Yeah, Moogie got a kill on bottom, too. Trading one for one, but meanwhile, Moogie just farm after storm, and there's not a whole yeah. lot they can really do about it. No. Uh, feels like a slow death, Brax. I mean, we've had yeah, a couple of these games recently. I mean, every time I look at the uh, net worth lead here for Team Nubia, it goes up by like a thousand about every two minutes. Yeah. Just from them passively farming around the map. And we well, saw least... a whole lot of this at the Manoa Masters. A lot yeah, of definitely. heroes getting just out, out of control, and then the slow death from one side. You know. I mean, Nubia are just flexing their map control muscles right now. You know, they're yeah. farming everything. You see, are scared to go anywhere because, well, they should be, man. There's Night Stalker and Batrider in the game. And their heroes aren't the best at dealing with uh, that sort of map pressure. Oh, but man. We talked about their 5-man, and their 5-man is still extremely strong. It's just about them being able to get the 5-man. We may see these try to force objectives like Roshan here. But something that perhaps we might feel like they have to fight. Yeah, exactly. It feels like they need Roshan, or at least some sort of map control or objective to be taken, because as it is right now, this could be huge. They have the Dream Call to come out to force away, hook shot to follow up for Bulba. Now they lose her up, jump through, there's the purification, big kill. They even relo relocating with Mason as well as Dubu, and they find the kill along with more than likely the tower as well. So 
pretty big kill coming out from DC. We'll see if they can't get anything else out of it. Definitely, that's how they need to get their game started. Meanwhile, we have Weaver in the bottom, Juggernaut on the top, still pushing, farming away, but there's nothing that can be done about that, right? They have to take a big hit. Uh, he's gonna go ahead and blade Fury TP. Put some more pressure onto the tier 3 tower. But uh, exactly, take what you can get for DC. And at the end of the day, that is a tier 1 tower along with the Batrider kill, which is very useful. And Mason is now top of the net worth, but can they do anything with it? We'll see. They are pretty close to building pipe up here for the Omni Knight. Looks like he did not end up going for the Midas. They knew that they might have just lost too much map control and too much of the game. So they needed an item first for Rev on this Omni Knight. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to gear up towards these items that'll help them force that next that next step. You know, that high ground, these tier 3 towers, tier 2 towers, Roshan. Mm. And they're trying to beef up so much that when Ubi is forced to fight them, they won't be able to combat them at all. But newbie, dude, this is a small dude, man. They're small right now. It feels like it feels like they're a step ahead of DC right now in terms of what they're getting out of the map and really just the game in general. They're finding this so is, much. This is very smart. It's pretty unexpected. They got the night soccer during the time as well. You just read those that's down in the and then the And I mean, DC are gonna feel so bad. It's not great. That's uh. And now Darkness is popped as well, just for good measure. They're already losing map control. There are still two tier two towers they have to keep alive. Um, do you think Newbie could push high ground here in the next like five minutes or so with the stages? I think unless they're like 15k goal ahead, they're not going to look to do it at all. They know that uh, DC strongest, their their lineup is strongest when they're fighting together as five. And if they're trying to push high ground together, that's where they're kind of playing DC's game. Yep, up, Dream bomb. Foil, Purification to fall up. And he's still pretty tanky. They will finally get the kill. It's the Illusory Arb and Volva getting the last hit as well. So that's a pick they needed. And they can also transition this right into a tier 1 tower. Excuse me, tier 3 tower push. But meanwhile, mid lane, Moogie. Looks like he's trying to man fight. Dubu trying to get away. There's the relocate. And it will bring him out. He still gets the oh, kill. So they bring Bristle back, back to the base. And that'll be that because Dubu's dead for another 20 seconds. And he already just used relocate. So that's crazy. Talked about the last pig weaver looking quite elusive against their lineup. He just ignored the bristle back that entire time, man, and just killed the wisp right next to him. He didn't do anything about it at all. Ugh, he can really kite the um, bristle back as well now with the fusel blade up. But he wants to save the charges, I would assume, for something more important. Yeah, he's just gonna gun down the wisp every fight if possible. Ugh, it's not fun. It is not fun for the DC supports right now. And uh, they'll just keep farming for Newbie and continue to take control of the map. It is a 6.6k net worth advantage. And they continue to press it. Kaka just trying to find mid. He's building into the Aghanims right now. He was going for a Solar Crest and decided against it. Now, getting caught is going to be Bulba. He'll pop the Blade Mail. They have the IR overcharge, but there's the Omni Slash jumping through as well. And now the Guardian Angel forced out. The Blade Fury is there. Dream Crawl jump in. Abed wants that kill. The Waning Rift isn't enough. Moogie gets off the time lapse in time. Force forward. kp has got the Firefly. He's got the last one as well. Will they use it on Mason? Absolutely. Now turning in Frostbite. The Freezing Field to come out. The Void. Everything. No relocate save available. They'll grab both of them. And Abed coming in, trying to finish at least one of these heroes off, but cannot do so. And that's another three kills going the way of DC and Newbie losing absolutely nothing. Man, man. Bristleback goes down. Just that's all it takes, man. One lasso. And all these heroes are just counting and taking it down in the city. This is the point where you want your Bristleback to be, like, unkillable with the support of the Wisp there. But it's not happening. Wisp comes into the fight and dies in, like, three right clicks from Weep. Mm. It just looks quite difficult right now. Yeah. Not great. They needed that age so badly. Maybe one step ahead and they were able to take it during the daytime as well. Yeah. It's just more control. Especially in terms of map control. Uh, how close are they to the Zags? Pretty close for Kaka. Like, yeah, it's getting close. That's scary. I don't know what you do against that. I guess you're kind of our, you're kind of playing as five already, but I don't know. He's got all the time in the world to just sit and farm his Ags. DC can't really apply any pressure at all on the map. Mm -hmm. You know, if they see him on the map, then they're less scared of the Night Stalker, obviously, but they're still the Batrider. So well, not at all. And they're going to have the Silver Edge soon as well. This is one of those rare cases where you're like, okay, a Silver Edge might actually do a whole lot against a Bristol this game. He has a Solar Crest right now. He's about to have BKB, but... 
is that going to be enough? Because it feels like he's dying very quickly, even now. Yeah, BKB will definitely help him stay alive, but he can still get kited here. Kaka, does he know this is coming? He's about to see Mason. Oh, he's, he knows. But he's going to get that one creep before leaving. Darkness pops, the spirit's hitting him. And he just jukes to the north, Rev chasing him down with a degen. He'll go for the TP, and looks like the hook out is there from Bulba just in time. The Hunter in the Night still trying to fly away. Battery Salt is up as well. He's so fast, so speedy, making so much space for the rest of his team, and he still will fall. It looks like one more auto attack should do the job at the other side. They're going to find Abed. The Yule Scepter coming out. Might be able to jaunt his way through. SCC, who's he going to turn on? It looks like they want to get the steal onto Dubu. Now the Freezing Field coming out as well. They might be able to get Moogie. Does he have time lapse? They're going to drop him in time, and SCC now getting caught as well. The Waiting Room commits is out of it. They're looking for the team on the other side they're not going to jump through instead they want another hero looks like they actually did at the tail end faith's still running scc is able to tp out faith might not be so lucky abed blinks up big kill for dc they lose dubu but a great turnaround there and the puck staying alive to make it all happen yeah, tons of gold coming out from these bounties here nice moves from dc i mean their team fight is still so strong we saw bristol back taking like no damage in that fight abed was able to i mean he got caught and they're able to turn it around Fucked very hard to lock down. He's got his little scepter now as well. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, good stuff from Team DC here. And now it's daytime too. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Daytime is now up and ready. DC have a couple moments to breathe here. Uh, I think Aegis is still up for SCC. Uh, I guess not. Just Looks right. like it's not. Yeah, it just, just went down. So they have some time. Second Roshan is going to be huge for them for DC, I would imagine. Brax getting that cheese up as well. Yeah, if that, they can that's get the to big it. one now, isn't it? The second one? Mm hmm. Feels like it kind of lines up with like Ooh, where he's going. Sentry. Does he have hook shot? Waiting Rift Dream Quill. They're going to go on him. He's going to Manta out of it. Omni Slash coming through. GA pop perfectly. The Blade Fury. They've got that uh, ready hook shot up for. Oh, but he's going to actually cancel. There he goes. Double Cogs coming out. The Purification. The Healing Ward is there. The Repel is up. Forced out, though, by Faith. Beautifully done. Abed accidentally keep TPing in front of them. The Waiting Rift coming out. They're still going. Now they're trying to get a shrine, and DC need to back. Dubu is already dead, and here comes Darkness. The lasso is up for Grev. The Solar Crest is there as well. He's going to get caught. Cannot get the purification off. The silence is up. The Blade Fury looks like Bulba will die next. SCC walking up, getting a killing spree. They could not find the kill. Faith getting there in time for that four staff play is absolutely huge for Newbie. And they're looking for more. They're trying to chase after Mason, but it looks like he will be able to get out at the end of the day. Man, DC overchased so hard there, but it feels like they desperately need that kill so badly to stay in this game. You know, getting a kill on the Juggernaut right there after he loses Aegis would have been so huge. Yeah. But unfortunately, they were to get a nice force back. Do they have Mason? I felt like they were lacking in damage. I didn't notice no. if he was there or not. I'm pretty he sure was he wasn't. There. Yeah. He TP'd uh, away before the fight started. Yeah. They didn't have the relocated in either, it looks like. So. It is the end of darkness. 9,000 net worth advantage. Uh, Ags is completed as soon as he sells like his wand or something and gets a CS out of it. And it looks like he's just gonna farm. They're so far from their supports with that map control. Yep. Crystal Maiden's net worth, man. It's ahead of that of Kaka, which is insane. She's a full solar crest and now building into a glimmer cave and she's almost got it too. This is like the most farmed I've ever seen Faith. Like ever. Yeah. Definitely feels like that. This is not something you usually see out of this guy. But I'm pretty sure he's happy about it. Oh, definitely gotta be happy made a fat crystal made it. Made it half till darkness. Bulba does see out uh, Kaka here in his nice stalker. Yeah. Rewards drop down. Battery salt. Look for the hook shot. He is pretty tanky. He uh, can't hunt in the night away. It is not nighttime. They're gonna find the kill out of it too. Pretty big kill at that. Meanwhile, they relocate in with Mason. But uh, again, the split push top is commencing for Newbie. And this tower is already pretty low. Ob is going to come and throw up the Yule Scepter. But uh, here's the Healing Ward, and SCC does not really fear him at this point. Ob tried going for the Healing Ward, still can. Looks like he will get it, but uh, they really want this tier 3 tower. SCC needs to be careful. He's here alone. He can go for that Blade Fury TP, and he might have to. KP's there to back him up as well, but here comes the Silver Edge out. He will just hightail it away. So too will KP. They're going to try to chase after him. Abed looking for perhaps a Yule Scepter or a Dream Cold who initiate the start. There it goes. They have the flare for some vision as well. He'll try going for the TP. The Yule Scepter will cancel it. Now battery is still coming in along with the cogs. They have the shot. No, it's down for 20 seconds, but they don't need it anyways. They'll get the kill. Rotating bottom is Moogie, though. He's split pushing, and there's that Desolator as previously talked about. The amount of split pushing they have in this game, DC have to be very concerned about their 2-3s already. 
Blitz works down, tier 3 tower at top at 8p, Moogie just hitting bottom the entire time too. And now it's the uh, Night Stalker Aghanim's time. Yeah, it sure is. Good luck getting outside the base now, DC. I would imagine they saw the Aghanim Scepter because they rotated and killed the Night Stalker earlier, but I don't know if they can do anything about it. Meanwhile, Moogie gets the tier 3 tower top lane. It's also Shrine time. We'll see if Newbie heads to the Shrines and takes him out. I would imagine that's going to be the case. And they also drop a ward inside the base as well, so... DC losing what little map control they have left. Uh, and now Faith is a gem, which is the perfect time with it. Night Stalker Aghanim Scepter. Yep, and DC, or, uh, DC have been spotted leaving their base. Sink <laughs> but, you know, DC no Roshan's up. And I guess Newbie dude, Night Stalker has Aghanim Scepter. I mean, you, you you have to go for this if you're DC, right? Yeah, you, you can't let this go. This. If, if you give this up, you're going to just lose the game slowly, or perhaps very quickly in one team fight. It seems like the way it's going. All right, then. Um, I love this. Weaver actually, Moogie has the Diffusal Blade recipe, but he's locking his other Diffusal Blade because he wants the one charge out of it. And that's some efficiency. Yeah, that's pretty nice. And he will split with bottom. Okay, Kaka, man, he's just running in, placing more wards inside DC's base so they know what's going on at all times. And they have no idea he did that. Yeah. Absolutely none. Oh my god. That's... I mean, yeah, no, he's good. He's too Never fast. And Boogie doing his thing bottom lane. Good luck. Nah, they don't have Cliff. He could have put pressure on, like, he could have done one or two auto attacks in the range racks, but he just wants to be safe. And now they hit the Roche, because. DC are getting pulled all over the map, and there is really not much they could do. They're getting clowned on, man. This is what it feels like. Yep. Night Stalker just dips in and out of their vision range all the time. These heroes are so hard to catch, and they can just play, uh, play around all this vision. I mean, it just seems so unbalanced, right? With the Night Stalker Aghanims being really popular now, and him actually yeah. being like a really strong hero. I'm glad. Oh my god, Dubu just got like two shot. Unless you include the Geminix in which case it was four. But he's putting pressure on the range rack. They're trying to fight around the Roche pit. Roshan will go down. The Omni Slash coming through. Kaka does snatch it. They will not get the Roche kill, but I don't think they really care. Mason getting chased down. Here comes the GA. They're going to try to turn this fight. Frostbite is up as well. Kaka coming back in the urn charge, healing him back slowly. GA and Repel going to work. They will get Kaka, but that's just the Aegis. And now Newbie can reinitiate potentially. Meanwhile, all that space being created down to the bottom lane for Moogie. It looks like he might even get the full set of racks. He's at least taking care of the range rack. Still chasing out Faith. Abed looking for this last auto attack. Should get the kill and will. On the other side, Kaka brings down Boba. In the meantime, bottom racks have been taken completely. It's not even like they got the ages out of it for DC. All they got was a kill. Did they even get the cheese is the question. It might have been used in that fight previously. Oh my god. Is he doing his health man? That's two hits. He's uh, out of 150 health after. Yeah, he's pretty attack. low. Oh my god. Moogie is just going crazy. He's going to just keep you out in the tree line. They have no way of seeing him. He's gone. But SCC just throwing illusions at the top range racks, chipping away. Being incredibly annoying. That's not great. It's just such a hard game, man. Like, mm -hmm. They can't even get a team fight that they want, right? And now Moogie have a card such a big full lead that they're not even going to win these team fights head on. That was what, uh, 4v5 with Moogie? I guess it was a 4v4 since Moogie killed the Wisp right away in the team fight. Mm -hmm. <sighs> it's rough. I mean, where do you go from here? What can you do? I guess they've kind of had close 5 and 5 team fights. You know, if they only have one set of racks to defend, that means they can save. That's true. I like the way you think. Oh, Kaka tried hunting the night away, but he's going to get caught. Purification. They have the waiting rift on top. They immediately have to TP back, though, because guess who? Wait, are they even going to get this kill? Oh, they did pick it up at the end, but it looks really close for a moment there. Abed will grab Kaka. Moogie already putting pressure onto the, the range racks. Only one auto attack, though. Nothing too disconcerting. Um, but that's the response you need to have. You find one kill across the map, and you immediately have to keep it back. Rev will find the Yule Scepter, though, but he is kind of alone. The Purification has come out, and now KP looking to turn. He had the last who decided not to use it. Instead, they're going to go after Bulba. Here comes that waiting rift to come through. The break is up. They have the IO to come in with the overpower. Now the last has come through, and boy, does he die quickly. The Dream Coil counter initiation not really doing much. Blade Mill will go. Moogie looking to man fight, but Mason is as well. The Omni Slash jumping through. Bulba, one more auto attack. The double kill for SCCC, and Mason now needs to leave even after popping the BKB. All right. 
And they'll find another kill. Hobbit dies. Triple kill for ICC. Yeah, Pretty good I mean, stuff. DC, they tried to make something happen. They got a nice pick on the uh, Night Stalker, but I mean, that feels like they're a little too at this point. I mean, newbie just feel like they're on a different level. It is the best of one, so one game, anything can happen, but it looks like newbie are able to take control and take this first game of the Zotac clan final. There it is. Night Stalker, man, this is a hero definitely to watch out for playing against Nugi. Mm. Yeah, yeah I, we talked about Darks here, and he wasn't touched, and then Night Stalker came out and we're like, oh yeah, that seems right. That seems about right for Taco.